There are many misconceptions about the Antichrist in the world today. When mentioned, many recognize that this is a figure who has a lot of power. Some say Obama is the Antichrist. Others say it is Donald Trump. But is the Antichrist even a person? Could it very well be a system? Well, friends, in this video, we are going to discuss some disturbing facts of this figure and come to the conclusion of who this character really is. And like always, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to the channel. God bless. Before we begin to unveil this character, I would like to state that some of the information may be offensive to some viewers. But we must pull all emotion aside when it comes to learning Bible truth because that is the most important thing. Fact number one, the Antichrist will persecute and kill God's people. Daniel chapter 7 verse 25, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and thank the changed times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time, and times, and the dividing of time. So it says that this character will persecute and kill God's people. After we go through the facts, we will come to the conclusion of who this character is and describe how he fits each of these facts. Fact number two, the Antichrist will change times and laws. As mentioned in Daniel 7.25, it speaks about changing times and laws. You may be thinking, well what does this mean? Times and laws, my friends, is a direct reference to God's Ten Commandments. When evaluating God's law, you will see that there is only one commandment that is a time and a law, and that is the fourth commandment. It is a law and it establishes a certain time in which that law should take place. Exodus 20 verses 8 through 10. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So it says the Antichrist will attempt to change God's Sabbath. Fact number three. It would speak great words of blasphemy against the Most High. So there are two definitions of what blasphemy is in the Bible. Our first definition is found in the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 21. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And the second example is found in the book of John chapter 10 verse 33. The Jews answered him saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, and because you, being a man, make yourself God. So it says this Antichrist power will commit blasphemies. It will claim to forgive sins and claim to be God. Fact number four, there will be a man that speaks for it. Daniel chapter 7 verse 8. I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up from among them before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. And there, in this horn, were the eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking pompous words. To correctly understand this passage, you must know that the Antichrist, as the Bible prophesied, will be the fourth beast that is presented to us in the book of Daniel chapter 7. This beast had ten horns as described in Daniel chapter 7 verse 7. After this I saw in the night of visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. The ten horns are symbolized as ten kingdoms, so it says that a much smaller kingdom would arise out of it, the little horn, which is another name for the Antichrist, would have a man speak for it, or be the head of this system. Fact number five, it would destroy three kingdoms. Daniel chapter 7 verse 8 also describes three of these horns we plucked up. Three kingdoms that were a part of this ten kingdom empire would soon be removed. Now that we finished going over the facts, there is only one power that can fit these descriptions, and that is the papacy. Let's go through and explain how the papacy fits each of these facts. Fact number one was that the papacy would persecute and kill God's people. Does the papacy fit this description? Has the papacy ever committed an act where they killed and persecuted God's people? Of course. The Roman Inquisition, which is also known as the Dark Ages, was a time period where millions of Christians were slain by the papacy over religious matters. These people were slain because of their faith in God and their refusal of worshiping a false image. Bibles were made illegal, and if anyone was caught with one, they would be put to death by the various torture methods that were popular in that time. Fact number two was that the papacy would attempt to change times and laws. And as mentioned, times and laws are referring to God's fourth commandment. You might be thinking, the Sabbath has always been Sunday. Actually, friends, you're very incorrect. The Bible Sabbath is the seventh day of the week, and history records that the papacy themselves changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. 
In 321 AD, there was an Roman emperor by the name of Constantine. He changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday, and to even more support this point, take a look at the quote from the Catholic Church themselves signifying this decision. The Church of God has thought it well to transfer the celebration and observance of the Sabbath to Sunday. And you can find this in page 402 of the second revised edition published in 1566. We must remember that we are to obey God and not man. As the fourth commandment starts off, he says, remember. He says, remember because he knew that everyone would forget. The papacy fits fact number three of speaking great words of blasphemies against God. Because as we described, blasphemy has two definitions. Claiming to forgive sins and claiming to be God. Could this not be any more true? The priests of the papacy claim to have power that they can forgive sins. When the people step in the confession box, they confess all their sins to a priest and they claim that those sins are forgiven. But only God can forgive sins. Mark chapter 2 verse 7. Why does this man speak such blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Also, scripture clearly states that you only come to God for confession. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. And what's even more eye-opening to fit the papacy with this fact is his statement that themselves claiming to be God. You can find this in the Catholic National of 1895. It begins by saying, The Pope is not only the representative of Jesus Christ, but he is Jesus Christ himself hidden under the veil of flesh. Fact number four is an obvious and short one. It states that the Antichrist would have a man that speaks for it. The papacy fits this fact because it has the Pope as the man that is in charge. And the last one, the papacy fits the fact that it will destroy three kingdoms because in Daniel 7 it prophesied that there will be a beast with ten horns. This beast is a papacy. But on this beast, these ten horns represented the ten kingdoms, but three of those kingdoms were plucked up. Daniel chapter 7 verse 24. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and he shall subdue three kings. The ten kingdoms are the same as the ten toes described in the statue in Daniel chapter 2. Here's a link to that video discussing the statue if you haven't seen it. To continue, here is a description about the ten kingdoms. The Visigoths, which is Spain. The Anglo-Saxons, known as England. The Franks, known as France. The Alemanni, known as Germany. The Burgundians, which is Switzerland. The Lombards, which is Italy. Swavi, which is Portugal, and the Horulais, the Ostrogoths, and the Vandals were all rooted up. So this is what the Bible was referring to when it spoke about three being plucked up. Now let's speak about why these three kingdoms were plucked up. The emperors of Western Europe were predominantly Catholic and supported everything that the papacy stood for in its growth and authority. However, the three Aryan kingdoms, the Vandals, the Horulais, and the Ostrogoths did not support this movement. So the Catholic emperors decided they must be subdued or destroyed. So just as history records, it is very easy to fit the papacy with each of these facts. What I would like to remind you is this. Just as the papacy destroyed and wiped out these three kingdoms because they did not bow to her authority, the same will happen to those who refuse to make an image to the beast. Revelation 13, 15. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many who would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. The time is closing, friends. I want to encourage you to get into your Bibles and develop that loving relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are told in Revelation 14, 12, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they who keep the commandments of God. Keeping the commandments of God demonstrates our love for our Creator as described in John 14, 15. If you enjoyed this video, friends, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Also, you can follow me on my other platforms to make sure you'll be updated on everything that I post. God bless.